Hi, Dr. Emron here with Spring Cure, and I want to talk to you about something that a lot of people deal with when they're trying to lose weight, and that's sugar cravings. If you've ever had that craving for something sweet, you know what I'm talking about. That, that donut, that uh, cupcake, something that takes the edge off. Well, there's a lot of reasons to have sugar cravings, and it's really important to address this. If you don't address it, then it becomes a problem that keeps rearing its ugly head over and over again as you go through a weight loss process. So how do we approach a sugar craving? Well, there's two big categories of reasons why we get sugar cravings. There's mental reasons, things that, that cause us to be addicted and conditioning, and there's physical reasons for, for sugar cravings. So let's start with the mental. First of all, we're conditioned to think of things uh, as needing sugar. So when we talk about something like tea, we get ourselves used to a particular level of sweetness and we're used to thinking of it that way. So one of the things that you can do to overcome that conditioning is start changing how much sugar you put in. Control it yourself. So if you're used to having it a certain sweetness, measure how many sugar teaspoons of sugar does it actually take to get to that sweetness level that you're used to having in your favorite restaurant or at home or whatever, and then start over time decreasing the amount of sugar it takes to change what your expectation of sweet is. The second thing that you can do uh, for that kind of conditioning that we have is we're used to having excess sugar because we add, uh, we add uh, 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 ice to the products. So we add ice to it and that dulls our sensation of sweet. So adding less ice or drinking the drink a little bit warmer can actually change our perception of how sweet it is. The next thing is we have an actual physical addiction to sugar. When we take uh, sugar on a regular basis, it actually improves the happiness hormones in our body. Now, it sounds great. Unfortunately, there are some side effects to that. When you take that extra sugar and you count on the sugar for that happiness feeling, things that would normally make you happy don't make you quite as happy. So when your team wins the football game, you're not quite as happy as you used to be and you have to reach for an extra soda in order to get that good feeling back. So you want to make sure that you're actually not uh, allowing yourself to be addicted. And again, cutting back over time will help you wean yourself off of that because the sugar actually acts on your brain to activate the, the pleasure centers, the dopamine receptors, and not only that, it also acts on the opioid receptors. Those are the receptors in your brain that pain medicine works on. So it takes away pain and gives you pleasure. Oh my God, what a great drug, right? So, but over time it can add extra weight and it takes the control out of your hands for being happy and for, for relieving pain. Okay, so you want to make sure that you're not using it that way to relieve pain. You want to make sure that you're, when you truly have pain, you address the problem. Now the other thing that contributes to the mental cravings is stress. When we're stressed and we have our stress hormones up, those stress hormones such as cortisol and epinephrine, those can cause us to crave sugar. Why? Because sugar is the rapid energy source that our body uses when we're under stress. When that lion jumps out of the bushes, we need a fast source of energy to be able to take off and run. That's sugar. So when we, when we have stress all the time, we're constantly activating our drive to eat more sugar. And how much does it affect us? Well, it can make us take in as much as 20% more sugar than we would otherwise. Our craving for sugar increases by as much as 20%. So what do we do about that? All right. So for the, we talked about cutting back on the sugar over time, but to reduce your stress, there's a couple of little things that you can do on a regular basis that can help reduce your stress hormone levels and get your body back able to get rid of the need for that excess sugar. The first of those, to reduce epinephrine, we want to activate the other system in our body for maintenance and for regulation of our body functions. That requires us to relax and do some deep breathing. So how do you do that? You take a deep breath and you let it out slowly. You do that a few times, 10, about 10 times over every once in a while throughout the day that helps reduce your stress levels, reduces your epinephrine levels, and helps reduce that impact on your cravings for sugar. The second is if we shut off the cortisol system. Now how do we do that? Well, if you do lemon, 
uh, lemon with its peel on into hot water that will extract a substance from that lemon peel that actually shuts down the conversion of cortisone into cortisol which shuts down that system of our stress hormone response that allows us to get rid of that source of cravings for sugar now the physical side now those actually are kind of mental and physical but the physical size is the the actual things that we may be missing in our diet that cause us to crave sugar the first of those is chromium chromium is a mineral or a, a, a metal that we get in our diet usually from foods that contain sugar things like sugar cane and sugar beets have a lot of chromium in them so when we crave the sugar we're actually craving that we may be craving that stuff that used to come with the sugar that's one thing and you usually can get that from a really high quality multivitamin the second thing is vitamin D when we don't have enough vitamin D which we usually get either from our diet or from some sun exposure or from good supplementation again our cravings for sugar increase okay so you want to make sure that you're getting adequate vitamin D sunlight Right now, I mentioned sunlight with vitamin D, but sunlight by itself can actually depress you without, if you don't get enough, can actually cause depression and a craving for sugar again. So you want to make sure that you're getting adequate light into your eyes on a regular basis, getting outside and seeing that bright sunshine morning, noon, and at sunset in order to be able to shut down again the need for carbs uh, that that triggers. And finally, there's temperature. I don't know how many of you keep your house cold, uh, but when you, when you check at, on the thermometer at home, you'll, if you notice, once the temperature drops below 76 degrees in the house, you will end up being, you'll crave sugars and starches so much more. You'll find you're, you're reaching for the chips or you're reaching for something sweet all the time. That's why when you walk into a coffee shop, it's so cold. That's why when you walk into a restaurant, it's so cold. That's why when you walk into the grocery store, it's so cold because it makes you crave things 20% more. That 20% can drive you to buy 20% more. You think that the, the, the uh, grocery store knows that? Of course they do. They want you to buy that. You think the coffee place wants you to buy more? Of course they do. All right. So they use this trick in order to get you to crave something sweet that makes you buy more okay so those are some of the things that stimulate sugar cravings and now that you know that you can start working against those shutting down your stress shutting down your addiction replacing those things that you might be missing in your nutrition in order to get rid of your sugar craving thanks and we'll see you at the next video